All right, Pisces, let's get into a reading. We're just gonna do a love update and see what's coming out for you in love. Keep an open mind, this may or may not resonate. You can find everything I'll offer down below in the comments section. And Patreon and channel members get to see these first. Spirit could be asking you to take some time alone so you can recharge. Or this could be this person's energy. This person could be taking some time alone to recharge. Retreating from others. Okay. Some of you, this is what we got. You have someone here that was brought, in your, brought into your life to teach you a lesson. A lesson around the fact that something did not align with you. This person does not align with your values or your morals. This person could have some sort of an addiction or could have an addictive personality. So they could be the type of person where they love for people to love them unconditionally. They could be addicted to attraction. So this could be the kind of person that when things kind of start settling down or when there's not butterflies anymore or that intense passion and chemistry, they kind of start detaching a little bit. <clears throat> All right. For a lot of you, um, this is an aging player is what this is. For a lot of you, you have an aging player in your energy that you are healing from because this person taught you a lesson. They could have rejected you. They could have pushed you away. They could have ran. Here's the thing. If you're not on the same page as someone, it shows up as rejection. I don't care if it's something as simple as, well, I want a relationship and they didn't, Danielle, and we've not figured it out yet. It is rejection until something shifts. So someone here has rejected you or done something that made you see that they cannot give you what you want or you deserve. Now, for a lot of you, this could have shown you that you had a, that you had an outdated way of thinking, okay? This could be something where you were conditioned to believe. Some of you, you had a belief, something that you were conditioned to believe was reality. Some of you, you were conditioned to think that you only deserved people if you had to work for it. Some of you, you felt that you could change this person's mind. There is something here that you had to recognize that what you thought was reality was not reality. And even if you thought it was gonna go in your way, your favor, it wasn't. What does this person want and why are they coming up? This person wants to meet up with you. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to laugh. It's just so weird to me because it's like, okay, well this person can't give you what you deserve. They have outdated thinking. They could have held things over your head. They could have really taught you a hard lesson around what was protecting you from what you thought you wanted. They don't align with you when it comes to your values and your morals. So what you would find effed up, they might just see it as a day ending in why. You might be like, okay, you use people. You like to use people's emotions and feelings and when they like you to get what you want, that's really jacked up. You're manipulative. They might be like, am I manipulative or am I strategic? Because there's a difference. That could be this person's energy. And again, they could be addicted to the passion, the affection that you show them, this unconditional love that you show them. For some of you, what's happening here is they're, they feel like they're missing out on you. They feel like they're missing out on your life. They're having FOMO. And I think this is a hard truth for them because they want to they wanna meet. They want to converse. Because they see you as someone who uplifts them. They see you as someone that they don't want to lose. But for a lot of you, this is an aging player. This is someone who's quick to jump ship. This is someone who's quick to make a choice and then decide later that they wish they could take that choice back or make a different choice. This is someone who is selfish. And it's someone who feels that their wants and their needs matter more. This person could have the tendency to gaslight or do one thing and act another. So for some of you, this is someone who would <clears throat> gaslight by saying things like, 
I want to marry you. I'm crazy about you. Well, if I could fall in love with any guy or any girl, it would be you. But then when you're not there, they could have made comments like, I never said that. They just think I'm in love with them. They're crazy. They're delusional. No, but you did just say if you could fall in love with anyone, it would be them. So let's make sure that we're, that, that's this person's energy. They could have definitely acted different ways depending upon who was around. All right, let's get a little bit more. What is this person, what do they want to say to you? What do they want to say to you? What do they want you to know? I'm hearing um, Sabrina Carpenter. I'm talking nonsense. So this person could have the tendency to talk, but it be nonsense. Things where it's like, I don't even know why you, you're saying that, why you're bringing that up. This person wants to say to you that they're not feeling fulfilled. That they want to offer you something, but they're not where they should be to offer you something. That they've been trying to manifest and make things work out in their favor, but it hasn't worked out. And that they're really burdened. And they're sorry that they have to tell you this truth or this bad news. And that they're okay with being friends. And maybe, you know, hooking up and keeping it casual. But they know you want eternity. And right now they can't give you that. This person, I'm telling you, <clears throat> this person is going to try to take what you can give them if you'll give them anything. This person could have someone else attached to them, someone who is self-absorbed, someone who they could view as your competition, whether it's a male or a female, I don't care. They could have someone else attached to their energy that is kind of like your, your enemy, pretty much. Like, if, if you guys were in a competition, it would be you two against one another. The person, the other person besides you is very angry, very hurt. They're tired of dealing with this person. They're also self-absorbed. So, here's the thing. Whoever this is that I'm bringing out, this person that's got major FOMO because you're over here living your life. They want to come in. They want to meet up. They want to tell you that they've not been feeling too good. They want to tell you that they're not satisfied being single or that they miss you. There's something here that they're not feeling abundant about. But what they're not going to tell you is that they're attached to someone else that is like a karmic partner and that person love bombs them. That person's also kind of narcissistic. They're in a relationship with a karmic. If it's just a sexual relationship, a friend relationship, a baby mama, baby daddy relationship, they're in a relationship with a karmic, no matter what that looks like, where it's about them winning, them winning. I want to win, you want to win. Together, we will win. It isn't a mutual give and take relationship. It's big on throwing each other's flaws in one another's faces. Like, I mean, it, it's not healthy. Now, this person could want to come and talk to you because they feel when they're around you that they're uplifted. I feel for some of you, though, you might avoid this person or you're going to ignore them. For some of you, they feel like they would love to be around your energy, be around you, but if there has been something here where you had to set a boundary with them, they feel like you could still be angry at them. That you are in a place where you're making healthier choices. And although they want to reach out and tell you that they miss you and they hope they, that you've been doing good and they wanted nothing more than to pick up the phone and say, hey, how have you been? There's been things kind of keeping them stuck. What they're not going to say is one of them's their choice. It's their choice that they're stuck. Now, again... There could be someone that they have attached to them that's kind of like competition. That person's very self-absorbed and that person is only in that relationship or dealing with this person because there are benefits to it. Whether it's financial, um, mental, spiritual, there are benefits. They get something. If they weren't getting anything, they would not be messing with this person. Now, why does this person want to come back to you? Now, again, remember I said in the beginning, this person's an aging player. They're looking at your photos. They're missing you. They're wanting to make an effort to reconcile with you because they feel like they have romantic feelings for you. Y'all, why do they want to come back?
because they miss when you used to be very emotionally loving and giving and open and vulnerable. They miss when you were patient with them and compassionate and empathetic. They miss when you would miss them. They miss when they felt that you were single because of them. So for some of you, you have an aging player, male or female, I don't care. You've got someone attached to your energy that misses when they knew that you were stuck on them. And now that they don't know if you're stuck on them or not emotionally, they wanna come in and see if now's the time to fix this. What does that look like? Again, they're wanting to make new memories with you. They're looking at your photos, they're thinking a lot about the past. They're watching you. They're wanting to have the strength and the courage to come in and give honest communication about, for some of you, this person's recently single. If this person did have to choose between two, because didn't that show up somewhere, that's failed, okay? Yeah, and they could want to give you a message of good news. Hey, good news. I think this is going to be fair and this is where I want to build. I know I was scared about change and transformation in the past, but now that I've reevaluated it, I've seen that this is what I want. Why are they coming in now? They do want to build something, I'm telling you. Feeling a lot of passion, feeling a lot of desire, wanting success and wanting victory with you. Hmm. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know. Okay. I carry guilt for the way that I had treated you. Give me a little bit more. I, I just, here's the thing. Their energy is amazing. When it comes to everything that they're wanting, they're wanting to build a union. They're wanting stability. They're wanting a new beginning with love and emotion. They're wanting all this new stuff with you. They have a lot of desire. But I also see if you're not careful, this person's going to come in and love bomb you. So they're going to come in and tell you that hurting you wasn't the plan. And that they carry a lot of guilt for whatever took place. But again, they're having FOMO. FOMO is the fear of missing out. The fear of missing out of what you've got going on in your future. They wouldn't be missing out if they wouldn't have made choices and decided that they don't like where they're at now. Now, with unavailability and all of that, it's telling me that this person is not able to give you what you deserve. You made me see a side of me that I hate. Again, this person could have been addicted to unconditional love, affection, or passion. So, this person could have had a way that they thought love looked. And if it didn't look like that anymore, it wasn't love. It isn't okay. So that reminds me of the people who are like, you know, I've been with my person for five years. I don't get butterflies anymore. Actually, when him or her walk into, in, in the door, I'm just like, okay, whatever, they're home. Does that mean we're out of love? Should I leave? I would say that that just means you guys are comfortable with one another and the intense chemistry that you once felt is over. That's just becoming safe with one another. That's just really getting in the middle of the relationship and recognizing, oh, we know each other now, so we don't feel that anymore. This person would see that as a red flag and then jump ship. There's no good reason for the way that I acted. I've been missing you more now that we're apart. I've been feeling your presence. I'm so embarrassed for how I acted. Life hasn't been too nice to me. And I'm seeing that I took this out on you. I'm hearing if you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. Okay. Um, how do they feel about you right now? They have a lot of emotion for you right now. Why is this truth just now coming in for them? Because they're seeing where they could have had success and victory. They could also be seeing where they, again, were lacking values and morals. Now, here's the thing. Some of you, there's just going to be a very in-depth conversation that's going to take place with this person for you to figure out what's happening, okay? For some of you, this person's going to be able to recognize how they showed up in their life and how it was not aligned with values and morals, and they're going to shine a light on that when they have a conversation with you. They're going to come in and tell you that at one point they were unavailable, that there was some sense of rejection, why they did that, 
again, this could be something as simple as I viewed love as this. I thought love was butterflies fighting or we're either fighting or we're loving. There's no in between. It's like this person had to understand what love was for them. And for a lot of you, you view this person as an aging player. And that could be the message of truth or a message of bad news. That's going to be for some of you. And that could be the regret and disappointment. Because here's the thing. I say it once, I'll say it again. How you show up is your reputation. So if someone doesn't want to date you because they see you as a player, or they see you as someone who's inconsistent, or they see you as someone who jumps ship right when things get hard, that is a message of truth or a message of bad news. Hey, bad news is, is you think that you're dedicated, you're stable, you're grounded. I think you're flighty as hell and I can't depend on you because I don't know if you ever coming back. That could be a message of bad news. And again, that could be something that's going to take place as the conversation unfolds. Is they could have been doing a lot of inquisitive energy around how they felt about you in this relationship. And they're recognizing that they want a reconciliation. Why do they want a reconciliation? Yeah, again, wanting to put an ending to the way life is. This person might not be good single for some of you. Or this person could just be in a place where they're finally like, okay, I'm tired of being single. I no longer want to be a player. I'm ready to shut it down. What am I shutting it down on exactly? Like that could be this person's energy. Are they going to be long lasting? I'm not taking those. This person could have a hard time sleeping for some of you. In divine timing, it will be... Okay. I see movement forward. I see you guys fighting for this if you decide to give this your all. Okay. So here's the thing. So a few things I've got coming out. So for, first thing, if you decide to invest in this person, I see happiness. I see movement forward. But I also see it ultimately being your choice on what you want. Now, when it comes to effort and dedication, I see you being the kind of person where when you pour, you pour everything in it. And you need to be careful with that because there was a foundation here that has crumbled and it's for a reason. And you need to ask yourself, when it comes to me winning what I want, at what at what cost am I willing to possibly lose something? I do think for some of you, there is still going to be a little bit of like toxicity or something that you are not going to be able to see until it's too late in this relationship that's not healthy. A foundation that might be consistently crumbled. Now, let's see why that is. I think this person has a tendency whenever they have a hard time expressing something emotionally or when they're having a hard time understanding what they're feeling emotionally, instead of taking time to figure it out, they shut down and they turn their back on it. So this could be a man or a woman where it's like, okay, we're kind of at a rock or a hard place in our relationship. What are we going to do? You might say, okay, let's do therapy. Maybe let's do some journaling. Maybe every night before bed, we need to sit there and have some conversations about what's happening. It might take us a little bit, but we'll figure it out. This person doesn't do that. This person's like, nope, it's got too hard. We're done. And I'm turning my back. And it's because they have a hard time expressing what they're feeling. So they act like they're not feeling anything at all. And they stuff it down and they turn their back. And that is going to be a problem if you decide to give to this person. Now, again, the reason they're wanting to reconcile is because they want everything. And I'm saying it. However, they also are scared of missing out, missing out on a future with you, missing out on the good days that you have coming up. And you have to ask yourself, is that enough for you to take them back? Because they have the fear of missing out. For some of you, you're going to say, Daniel, I'm just glad they want to be here with me. Kudos, honey. That's a big deal, especially these days. So you guys are going to talk about giving and receiving equally. Somebody could burn candles. Um... Maybe over a candle at dinner. When this person comes over, you could be burning candles when they come over. I do see a juggling energy here, though, on whether or not you think this person is long-term material. Yeah, see, five of swords. 
do you know what the five of swords reminds me of you know those people that you're friends with or those family members where you know if they had the opportunity to get everyone over they would that's the five of swords for me that's the kind of energy where if your friend has a choice between you and another friend they're going to stab you in the back and abandon you it don't matter about communication it only matters about what they want that's the five of swords there's a sense of betray betrayal in that I think you, I think you're recognizing that this person and you could have a new beginning, but you're unsure how, how stable it would be. It's a little bit of, if you want this Pisces, you're going to have to want this and want nothing else. Because I do think that this relationship is going to take a little bit of your peace of mind, if I'm just being honest with you. So what can they offer? They can offer the strength to, they're going to offer love and say that they want a completed cycle. You guys are going to move this forward, but then it's going to be met with confusion or illusion. Be careful of this person coming in and you guys getting on mutual grounds. And then you guys becoming passionate or intimate and then everything kind of going up in the air. So I am saying for some of you that this person could want to come in again. They've been an aging player. They're ready to settle down. They're ready to make a choice. But it's like as soon as they have these conversations with you and you guys kind of figure out where you want to go, the wheel's going to start turning. They're going to have the strength and the courage to come in and offer something and you do the same. Then a cycle is going to be completed. Well, when that cycle is completed, it's going to be met with movement forward and then halted by confusion or illusion. That confusion or illusion is going to make you think about the past and go, wait a fucking minute, I've been here before. We've done did this before. And a lot of you, if you guys kind of figure out what road you want to go on or what you want to do, and then you connect quickly after passionately, you're going to realize that that's going to kind of confuse things. And it's going to make this foundation a little, a, a little rocky. So for some of you, they could be requesting for you to wait maybe six to seven weeks for you guys to figure out what this completed cycle looks like and what the stability in this relationship looks like. But for a lot of you, that's the karmic aspect of this relationship. This person has FOMO. They don't want to miss out. Then they come in. You guys kind of get on a path and then they jump off the path. Imagine going hiking with someone and as soon as you start hiking, your friend goes off the path. You've lost them. And then they come back on the path at the end. That's this person's energy. And again, that could be that karmic aspect of this relationship. Yeah, so for a lot of you, this person likes to chase. They like to chase. And then when they get the security or the safeness of a relationship, it doesn't feel the same. So then they jump ship or they abandon. So they could be big on like codependent relationships. They could be big on being needed. Like I need you to need me. Like so much so that I hope you're not breathing if you don't need me anymore. That's This person's big on that. Again, missing when you love them unconditionally. I think what's happening here is this person loves the way you love them, but they don't love you the way you need to be loved. And that's going to be the problem here. You're an unconditional lover. You'll give kisses to anyone if they'll take them, Pisces, because you're a lover. That's what a Pisces is. However, a lot of people will chase you simply because it's a goal. It's something to be obtained. And what you'll notice is when a lot of people chase you as soon as they get you or as soon as they've gotten what they want, they disappear. And then when you're out of their reach again, boom, here we come back. So that's what's happening here. You're like, you're the, you're the bone to the dog, okay? The dogs want to chase the bone. Now, again, I see you guys coming together. You could be getting a surprise invitation from this person. Hey, do you want to go out to eat? Hey, we should catch up. Hey, come over and go swimming with us. And the relationship's going to grow and transform. This person's going to express to you everything that happened. I see the energy around that conversation being really, really lighthearted. And then I see you guys deciding what that new phase looks like. Now, for each of you, it's going to be different. For some of you, you're going to say, this doesn't deserve a second chance. You know, you broke my heart. You made me really sad. There's just too many issues. We can't do this. And again, some of you are going to go, no, Daniel, I want to do this again. And then it's going to be met by like a brick wall again. 
Yeah. So what I'm saying is that you could possibly indulge with this person, but I don't see it lasting forever. So be careful of allowing someone who is an aging player, who shows you that they don't necessarily know what they want, who says one thing and does another. Be careful of allowing them to come back in and, and shake your foundation, shake your life, shake your reality, because they're confused. I see you almost kind of thinking that you're getting what you want or even being like, maybe I should indulge in this. Yeah, I'll go out with you for about nine days. Yeah, we can hang out. And then getting wrapped up in it to where you then have to heal from it again. Be careful of allowing someone to come in and make them make you think that they're giving you everything that you want when they're not. They're putting you up on a pedestal to push you off. Do not allow this person to build your hopes up high for them to disappoint you, okay? Communication about what a soulmate looks like. You're gonna get good communication from this person, but something deep down is gonna tell you, is this your emotional fulfillment though? Does this make you happy? And if it doesn't, tell them. Listen, it doesn't make me happy that I feel you wanna go out to eat so you can get your way. So I'll hear you out when I really don't wanna see you. It doesn't make me happy that you think, oh, hey, if we go out to dinner, that means that I get you tonight, right? Some of you are going to have to be honest with someone and let them know, listen, I don't like the way that you're showing up. It doesn't make me happy, which means I'm not going to put myself in it. Only then will people change and grow, okay? So, I think what you need to know is that there is a possibility for something to grow here if you want it to. But don't get too caught up in the potential and what it could be and what it might be and what, and what it could become. Recognize what it is. And right based off of what it is right now, this person's got major FOMO. They want to come in. They want to enjoy some, some moments with you, maybe a few weeks. But then I see something happening where you recognizing, oh, wait, here we go again. Yep, I knew this was going to happen. I knew I should have had my wall up. I knew I should have been guarded. I knew I should have. And for some of you, you're not going to be able to put your finger on it. It's like you're going to know deep down, okay, I can feel that something's about to happen. You're not going to be able to put your finger on it. You're just going to wait for it to take place. And then you're going to be able to go, I knew that was about to happen. I mean, I wasn't going to go around screaming that was going to happen. But I knew deep down, okay, the shoe's about to drop. Let it drop. Let them show you what they want. Now, if this person does come in and give you that message of truth, hey, listen, I want success and victory with you, but I want to be single and I want to remain independent. Have firm boundaries in that relationship, okay? If that's what someone wants, that's what someone can have. But what are you willing to give them and it not bother you if they don't give you nothing back, okay? So I had this conversation with someone the other day. This person said, well, I mean, I would have sex with them. Okay, that's fine. But if you have sex with someone and you expect them to give you something back, that can be manipulation, so make sure that you're not sleeping with someone or giving someone everything, your time, your attention, your affection, because you think in three, four, or five weeks, they're going to start giving that back to you. Because you might find that they are going to get comfortable with receiving and you've not set a standard for them to have to give. So why would they? So keep that in mind, okay? All right, I'm going to leave it here and I will see you soon. Have a blessed day.